Now, Europe's heavy lift launch rocket Ariane 6 had a successful takeoff on its second commercial flight on Tuesday night. The rocket launched at just after 9.30 p.m. local time at the European spaceport in Kourou in French Guyana. Ariane 6 will put into orbit at 800 kilometers altitude met up SGA-1, Europe's latest generation weather satellite. The satellite is expected to improve weather forecasts and provide a deeper understanding of climate change. Brian Quinn has the details. Three, two, one. Into the night sky above French Guiana, the Ariane 6 rocket lifts off on its second commercial mission, a successful launch crucial for Europe's space program as it blasts into the future. On board, the newest generation of European meteorological satellites, a system with enhanced sensors that will orbit the Earth longitudinally, crossing the same latitude at the same time of day for each pass, thus allowing scientists to better monitor the Earth's changing climate and better predict extreme weather events. Not only we have a global warming worldwide, but Europe is uh, warming up twice faster than any region in the world. So we have to understand this process. And it's, uh, it's the world organization about weather is working together, but the leading force in terms of science and means, it's Europe. The Ariane 6 is itself the new generation of European space transport, a heavy lift rocket whose full power setup is capable of taking payloads of over 21 and a half tons into low Earth orbit. It's aimed at securing the bloc's space transport sovereignty in a sector dominated by the U.S. and Elon Musk's SpaceX. And while Ariane 6 has had just two launches this year compared to more than 90 for SpaceX, the European rocket's order log is filling up. 32 missions are currently planned, half of them booked by Kuiper, a satellite internet service that billionaire Amazon founder Jeff Bezos is building to compete with Musk's Starlink. Ariane 6 is aiming for 10 launches per year by 2027, more than twice the pace of its predecessor, Ariane 5. And for more on the launch of Ariane 6, I can welcome Olivier Songhi, who is editor-in-chief of Space News at the Cité de l'Espace in Toulouse. Uh, good morning, Olivier, and thank you for joining us. Uh, this was a fairly successful launch for Ariane 6, by the looks of it. Yes, a very successful launch, and... Uh, third launch and the second commercial launch. So Ariane is ramping up. And um, in what way might Ariane be considered to be in competition with SpaceX and other commercial satellite companies? We've heard that the order log has been ramped up for uh, the European, uh, the rocket. And um, so will, will it be providing serious competition? Well, first and foremost, Ariane 6 is a launcher for European sovereignty. So <laughs> there's no match for that. I mean, uh, uh, Europe wants to launch its satellite with its own launcher. I mean, it's, uh, an it's to be independent. Even though uh, we could ask friendly countries to do it for us, we prefer to do it by ourselves, especially for sensitive satellites. For example, the previous launch was a military launch. It was a remote sensing military satellite, and we don't want to give this satellite to other countries. Um, so perhaps Ariane 6 is part of a quest for greater security independence on Europe's part. And do you think that that's a, a response to recent geopolitical uh, movings elsewhere in the world? Well, when IR6 was decided, the geopolitical world was a bit more stable. But I would say, OK, now we have IR6, and it's a good thing to have it. But IR6 also can have a commercial role. As you said previously, IR6 will launch Cooper satellites, American satellites. So there are customers who trust Ariane Espace. And Ariane 5 has shown that Europe can do very fine commercial launch services. So Ariane 6 will continue this uh, tradition, I would say. Now, there is a collaboration with the United States involved here. Um, but is there a possibility that that might be threatened by the Trump administration's aggressive stance towards science and particularly climate science? Well, about that, it's true that Europe is uh, perhaps uh, European Space Agency and European Union, especially with the Copernicus program, which is uh, 
a series of uh, satellite for climate change and weather and remote sensing of Earth. Europe is one of the leading uh, is leading the environmental satellites. So we are. I would say we are best than the uh, United States for that. And it's a good thing because we can't wait for the Trump administration to assess this. Uh, they are shutting down satellites that are observing Earth. So luckily for us, luckily for the science, the climate science, there is Europe. And uh, this is the third launch of Ariane 6, the second commercial one. The, the previous one in March this year was um, sent a military satellite into orbit. Europe is investing 20 billion euros in the program. Is this money well spent? Yes, it is money well spent because, uh, in fact, if we shut down all the satellites today, there will be no TV, no GPS, no telecommunication, and even no internet in some part of the world. So we rely on satellites, and satellites need launcher, and we need space technology. You know, you can't build a rocket without uh, engineers, without industry, etc. We need that money, but it is money well spent because we are in a technological world and part of this technological world needs space. Thank you very much for that, Olivia Songhi, Editor-in-Chief of Space News at the Cité de l'Espace in Toulouse.